let us now study about wave optics in this module we are going to cover important points on Huygens principle Doppler effect interference of waves diffraction of waves resolving power of optical instruments and polarization this will be followed by practice questions let us understand important points in Huygens principle as per Huygens principle the wave front is defined as a surface of constant phase the energy of the wave travels in a direction perpendicular to the wave front the locus of point that have same amplitude and vibrate in the same sphere constitute a spherical wave each wave behaves as a secondary disturbance for the particles lying ahead of it new set of wavelets emanate from secondary disturbance and spreads out in all direction with the speed of the wave the drawback of Huygens principle is that it is assumed that the amplitude of back wave is zero now let us understand refraction of a plane wave here n1 is equal to c by v1 and n2 equal to c by v2 here n1 and n2 refers to the refractive indexes of the respective mediums and v1 and v2 refers to the velocity of light in the respective mediums medium 1 and medium 2 so thus v1 by v2 can be given as lambda 1 by lambda 2 where lambda is the wavelength of the light in a medium although speed or wavelength varies from medium to medium frequency remains the same since it is source dependent let us understand important points in Doppler's effect when the source moves away from the observer the frequency of a wave as measured by the source is smaller let us understand redshift increase in wavelength due to Doppler effect that is source moving away from the observer is known as redshift and decrease in wavelength due to Doppler effect that is source moving towards the observer is known as blue shift a change in frequency by original frequency is given by minus v radial divided by c where minus v radial is the component of source velocity along the line joining the observer to the source relative to the observer this is applicable only if source velocity is smaller than speed of light now let us understand important points in interference of waves the first one is superposition principle at a particular point in the medium the resultant displacement produced by a number of waves is the vector sum of displacement produced by each of the waves this is superposition principle that is the resultant is equal to sum of all individual waves that is resultant displacement is equal to sum of all individual displacements coherent waves the phase difference produced by two waves that emanates from two sources will have constant phase difference coherent waves the phase difference produced by two waves that em emanates from two sources will have constant phase difference constructive interference if the path difference is given by n lambda and intensity is given by 4 i naught where i naught is the intensity produced by each one of the individual source then such an interference is known as constructive interference destructive interference here the path difference is n plus 1 by 2 lambda and intensity is equal to 0 let's understand incoherent waves incoherent waves are those in which the phase difference produced by two waves that emanates from two sources will have varying phase difference the intensity is given by i equal to 2 i naught where i naught is the intensity produced by each one of the individual source fringes pattern of dark and bright bands is known as fringes fringe width is nothing but the distance between two consecutive bright and dark fringes is given by beta equal to lambda d by d where d capital d is the distance between source and screen and small letter d is the distance between the sources itself now let us understand diffraction of waves the bending effect of light is known as diffraction 
here the path difference is given by a theta equal to lambda where a is nothing but the width of the slit now difference between interference and diffraction interference pattern has a number of equally spaced bright and dark bands diffraction pattern has a central bright maximum which is twice as wide as other maxima in case of interference pattern superposition of two waves from two sources happens in case of diffraction pattern superposition of continuous family of waves originating from each source happens now let us understand some of the important formula in a resolving power of optical instruments the radius of a central bright fringe is given by r not equal to 0.61 lambda f by a where f stands for focal length of the lens and a stands for diameter of the lens and limit of resolution of a telescope is given by delta theta equal to 0.61 lambda by a minimum separation distance in microscope d minimum is given by 1.22 lambda by 2n sin beta where n is the refractive index and n sin beta is the numerical aperture fresnel distance is given by zf equal to a square by lambda in case of distances smaller than zf the spreading due to diffraction is smaller compared to the beam and distances comparable to zf in this case diffraction is compared to that of ray optics distances larger than zf diffraction dominates over that due to ray optics now let us understand key points in polarization light waves are transverse in nature polaroid consists of long chain molecules aligned in a particular direction now let us understand what is a pass axis in polarization if an unpolarized light wave is incident on a polaroid then the light wave will get linearly polarized with the electric vector oscillating along a direction perpendicular to the aligned molecules this direction or axis through which the light gets polarized is known as pass axis let us understand mauls law the variation of light intensity by rotation of a polaroid is known as mauls law this given by i equal to i not cos square theta where i not is the light intensity before the polaroid is rotated let us understand brewster angle it is given by ib angle of incidence of unpolarized light on the boundary between two transparent media in such a way that reflected ray gets polarized and forms right angle with the refracted ray is known as brewster angle brewster's law states that refractive index of the denser medium is equal to tangent of brewster angle now let us get on with practice questions question number 1 in a single slit diffraction experiment the width of the slit is made double the original width how does this affect the size and intensity of the central diffraction band now the linear width of central maximum is given by beta equal to 2 lambda d by d on doubling the slit width d the size of the central diffraction band is half because the width of the central maximum is half its area becomes 25% of original area and hence the intensity becomes four times the initial intensity how did we get area 25% of original area because the width is comparable to the radius and if it is r by 2 the area will be we know the area of a circle is pi r square in place of r if we substitute r by 2 we get pi r square by 4 thus the intensity becomes four times the initial intensity question number 2 ray optics is based on the assumption that light travels in a straight line diffraction effects disprove this assumption yet the ray optics assumption is so commonly used in understanding location and several other properties of images in optical instruments what is the justification the answer is in optical instruments the size of aperture are much larger as compared to the wavelength of light so the diffraction effects are negligibly small 
Hence, the assumption that light travels in straight line is used in optical instruments. Question number three. When a low flying aircraft passes overhead, we sometimes notice a slight shaking of the picture on our TV screen. Suggest a possible explanation. The answer is, the low flying aircraft reflects the TV signals. Due to superposition between the direct signal received by antenna and the reflected signals from aircraft, the slight shaking of picture is noticed. Question number four. What is linearly polarized light? When does the intensity of transmitter light become maximum? When a polaroid sheet is rotated between two crossed polaroids. The answer is when the vibrations of the electric field vector are confined to only one direction in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation of light, then light is called linearly polarized light. Intensity of transmitted light is maximum when the polaroid sheet makes an angle of 45 degree with the pass axis. Question number 5. Two towers on top of two hills are 40 km apart. The line joining them passes 50 meter above a hill halfway between the towers. What is the longest wavelength of radio waves that can be sent between the towers without appreciable diffraction effects? The answer is for diffraction of radio waves not to occur, the distance of the hill halfway between the tower should be less than the Fresnel distance for a slit width A of 50 meter. The longest wavelength of radio wave which can be sent without appreciable diffraction effect is lambda equal to A square by D which is 12.5 centimeter. Thus, wavelength of radio waves longer than 12.5 centimeter will bend due to the hill in the middle of the towers. Question number six. Two polaroids A and B are kept in crossed position. How should a third polaroid C be placed between them so that the intensity of polarized light transmitted by polaroid B reduces to one-eighth of the intensity of unpolarized light incident on A. That is, there are two polaroids, A and B, and C has to be placed in between. So that light transmitted by polaroid B, it reduces to one-eighth of intensity of unpolarized light incident on the polaroid A. Here, let A be the angle between the pass axis of A and C. Intensity of light passing through A is I0 by 2. So, intensity of light passing through C is I0 by 2 cos square A. So, intensity of light passing through B can also be written as I0 by 2 cos square A cos square 90 minus A, which is I0 by 2 cos square A sin square A. Using trigonometry, we can write this as I0 by 2 sin 2A the whole square by 4. Now, intensity of light passing through B is given as I0 by 8. Thus equation 1 becomes I0 by 8 in case sin 2A equal to 90 degree. Thus A equal to 45 degree. So we need to place the third polaroid at an angle of 45 degrees. Question number 7. A beam of light consisting of two wavelengths, 800 nanometer and 600 nanometer, is used to obtain the interference finches in a Young's double slit experiment on a screen placed 1.4 centimeter away. If the two slits are separated by 0.28 mm, calculate the least distance from the central bright maximum where the bright fringes of the two wavelengths coincide. The two bright fringes will co coincide when m lambda 1 equal to m plus 1 lambda 2. This is given by m into 800 into 10 power minus 9 which is equal to m plus 1 into 600 into 10 power minus 9. On solving we will get m equal to 3. Now the least distance is given by m d lambda 1 by d. On calculation we get 12 into 10 power minus 3 mm. 